All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, today I'm going to be working on a Fox Body ECU. So I had buddy in the States, several buddies, and uh, they wanted to go on the Hot Rod Power Tour this last year. And one buddy went and uh, got his car. They hadn't probably driven in a while, knowing by probably what's wrong with his computer. I'm going to go fire it up, and it just didn't want to know. So, uh, one of my other friends overnighted him a spare computer for his car. He has a 64 Falcon with a Fox Body drivetrain EFI conversion to it. So, pretty nice car. Been in it before. Pretty fun. And, uh, obviously it was enough to do the power tour, because we got a replacement computer. And they went on power through the heat, and they got it done. So, I was kind of jealous. They sent me a lot of pictures, because I know I'd have been right there with them. If I was living there in the area in the States, but uh, so he got back and he ma mailed me this finally so I could take a look at it because he had his mail the computer for that was in his car back to my other buddy that sent it to him. So I got to fix the one for his. So let's see what's going on. All right, so what we're gonna do is hook it up to my little custom tester box. So I built this thing a bunch of years ago. What this is going to do is it's going to, I uh, hacked up an old speed density harness. That's a ECU power relay and a fuel pump relay inside this box. And you can hook it up to 12 volts, plug it in the computer. And then what we're going to see when I power it on, this is like turning your ignition switch in your car. So I just got a little 12 volt power supply here, old school radio shack thing. It's like turning the key on your car, and then when you, if you have one of those code scanners or you ever do your uh, your tests, uh, OBD1 code scanner, when you flip it to test, that's exactly the same thing that this does. It just bypasses or jumpers some wires together, and it'll start running your test and spitting out codes from your computer. And these are the since there's nothing basically hooked up, it's going to spit out like every single code. But it's also going to test some basic functionality. You're going to see, like when you first turn your key on, you'll see your uh, you'll hear your fuel pump prime for one second, then shut off. And then when you run the test, you'll see the, the check engine light flicker, and then it'll start flashing in sequence of five flashes, then one flash, so it'll be five one. And I can't remember if I went down the list or across like this or how it's going to go, but this is like the first eight fails that it's going to show you. But I don't have the room to put them all on. I just know that if it starts going through this sequence, that it's the computer's alive and active and working. So let's uh, let's hook this thing up, a little 10 mil nut driver, and we'll see the basic functionality of this thing before I do anything to it. All right, we're hooked up. So we got power. Key on, and immediately there's something wrong. So the fuel pump sh light should have the fuel pump should have run for one second, then shut off. So the fuel pump is on all the time. I don't even think it'll run a test. Nope. So this ECU is DOA. So this is one of the, the many common things that can be wrong with these computers. Check again. Yeah. So there's this is gonna be an easy fix, but it's gonna be replacing the capacitors inside of the computer. And there's many other videos out there how to do it. I'm just gonna take it slow, step by step, and show you how about how to go about looking, identifying the capacitors, showing you the ones to replace it with, showing you how to replace it with, putting it back together, and we're gonna test it again and you'll see the results. All right, before I crack into this thing, one more thing I forgot to mention. I do have an extra wire coming out of this harness, and that is for the 5 volt reference power, 5 volt DC, for all the sensors inside the engine compartment. You got your uh, your mass airflow sensor, your engine coolant temperature sensor, you know, the air t air temperature sensor, <clears throat> your throttle position sensor. All of them use a standard 5 volt reference input, and then. The varying output is what goes to the computer, so this voltage needs to be good and consistent in order for all your sensors to work properly. So if you have a car where you're you're chasing problems, you're you don't really exactly know you're changing every sensor in the book, throwing a shotgun, you know, partial replacement tactics at it, 
if your computer is a capacitor of your computer going bad this 5 volt reference signal could be all over the place not giving the computer the right uh, voltages and therefore throwing everything out of whack and you can chase your tail because it all starts with the computer so I've got my my meter here my powers back on so right now I have the one-handed mayhem here so, uh, so so pretty much no voltage right now the straight current coming in so key on and we're only getting 1.2 volts so yeah this is computer definitely bad for multiple reasons all right yeah just want to show you that so for another thing that we're going to be uh, looking that gets fixed with the capacitor change here it is got it up to my little pan of ice just super convenient for me I've used it a lot of times in the past but what we're looking for are these three blue canister capacitors and these are the original style ones in uh, these ECUs so if they've been replaced before if you ever get a computer that's just remanufactured on it these 99 times out of 100 these are just the three things that are gonna be replaced I've never seen any other components bad on these other than traces being burned off on the underside if uh, somebody tries to do a, a manual transmission swap and they don't know about uh, repinning the uh, the oxygen sensor harness they can burn a run or I've seen this capacitor leak so bad that it the acid comes out and it eats away the pins on this chip here so I've seen that but I mean, there's some signs to look for if you pull one of these apart and to notice if the capacitors are bad. I'm on the train of thought anymore that if they're still the original capacitors, they're just going to be bad. They are 30 plus years old practically by now, and they've just run their course. They're, they have a finite lifespan. Of everything on this board, these are the only things that really have a finite lifespan are the capacitors. These style of capacitors, you know, they're not really bothered by uh age as much but these these ones definitely and i don't know if the the gopro can, can get in on this let me turn the light on but you can start seeing some of the green fuzzy corrosion going on around the pins from the acid leaking out on these things it's off sometimes they, it could be so bad oh i think this one is bad that the the pins can be corroded right off of the capacitors on the board so that's exactly what i have here all right so we actually had two capacitors with each with one lead completely corroded off the board so this one's got its both leads still there but i'll guarantee you this one is still bad and i'll if i get it desoldered with both the legs still on i'll i'll run it across a little tester and i'll show you what i'm talking about i have highlighted the three areas that I need to uh, remove a the rubberized conformal coating off the back of these connections so the soldering iron will properly work. So this is, I never usually mark them out like this, I'm just doing it for this video, but I'll need to get a scribe or a small little screwdriver and sit here and gently poke through this rubberized coating and get it away from places where I have to desolder these legs off of so I'm gonna just do this and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start desoldering I cleaned up all the conformal coating around the pins I used a little nylon brush and a little toothbrush to be the same just to get the little bits of dust and crud off from it so now I start doing some desoldering and by the way I'm getting older, I'm blind. I gotta use a set of magnifiers when I work on this kind of stuff. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this kind of work yourself, you hopefully you can find or know somebody that does soldering. You can't use big honking soldering irons and equipment to, to do this. This is probably the, the last generation of, of electronics equipment that you can get in there and manually do some soldering work on with a reasonably 
size soldering iron before it used to, I mean, even this has got some surface mount this is like the dawn of some of the surface mount components but anything beyond this you pretty much can't do any work onto it anymore unless you got really specialized equipment so there's a basic old school soldering iron probably almost as old as i am but it still works good i can still adjust the temperature and that's one of the things you don't want to cook this stuff because you don't want to hurt the laminations of the board you don't want to scratch too hard getting the conformal coating off because you don't want to scratch through any of the uh the runs on the board you just have to take your time and this is not a difficult repair getting the cleaned up we're getting a little cluttered so stick with me so now that everything's desoldered I sucked the solder out of all the holes where the capacitors were I cleaned off the corrosion and the crud that was laying on top of the circuit board and I did the same thing I kind of scrubbed the conformal coating away at the same time I was cleaning all the corrosion so this board is cleaned and it's ready to accept the new capacitors so I bought capacitors several years ago from a place called Mauser, Mauser Electronics. And the two you kind of need, they're 16 volt, 47 microfarad, 20%. And I got good, uh, was it Nicholson caps? So, and this one is 63 volt, 10 microfarads on the other. Uh, package got a little cruddered up I don't know what happened I think it reacted to heat or something but you only need one of these of the 63s and you need two of the 47s so I have those sitting out right here and I got enough capacitors to do about 15 more computers so I'll we'll just go back in a little parts tray back in storage for the next one but the only one capacitor that I still had that had both of its legs on. I just want to show you what happens with these capacitors over the years. So this is a 47 microfarad capacitor. And see how it tests. I'm trying to angle the camera here so we don't get the glare. So you can't do this on a regular multimeter. So, all right, 47 <laughs> microfarads, what it's supposed to be. 128 microfarads and a voltage loss of 34 percent so yeah this this one is smoked so let me put a brand new one on here and i'll show you what that reads see what it does gunculating should be remember 47 oh, okay this one's 44 so that's pretty darn close and one percent loss so yeah so that's the difference between a brand new one and an original. So let me get these things prepped up and get ready to solder them in. Capacitors are all soldered back on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it back up to my tester before we do anything else to make sure we're all good. There's no sense in uh, sealing this thing up, putting it all back together if nothing's changed. So let me get it put back together here on the tester and bring it right back. All right, guys, this is why we do this. We get these tests, test it like this before we put it all back together. <laughs> I'm glad I did because I hooked it all back up flip the key or flip the switch and the fuel pump light stayed on so <laughs> spent about an hour troubleshooting this thing and uh i had to bust out another computer there's another i have like three a9ls on the shelf don't ever think i'm gonna use them might probably i'll just be best for me to sell them but you know i'm in england nobody needs them I can't be bothered to send it to the States, so. But anyway, 
Troubleshooting, troubleshooting, everything I did look good. The capacitors needed to be changed, no doubt about it. But the problem with this computer was right here where the, this capacitor would be. I can't zoom in anymore on this. <clears throat> with the GoPro, I'll give you a still here of what I'm pointing at. So this line here is like a big power in down here. This is a 13 and a half volts from the power supply from your, your car battery going to the computer. And I was getting 13 and a half volts right here. And then I'd get to testing it right here on the capacitor and it would drop to five volts. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I mean, it doesn't, didn't make any sense. I can get five volts, five volts. And down here was, you know, 13 and a half. So I took the capacitor out to make sure that the brand new capacitor like wasn't shorted or anything. And it still tests great. So I cleaned off more of the junk on right here and took really good close look at it. I got like a super duper strong magnifying glass. I mean, I could see like dirt in your, in your sweat pores and your fingerprints with this thing. So, but there is a break right here in this run going to this eyelet because of the corrosion from these capacitors, like all this, this black crud coming off that's leaking out of these things. So the corrosion could cause almost as much problems as the capacitors themselves going bad. So it ate through this, this run and I'm going to have to, uh, to rebuild it a little bit. Whether I run a jumper from here to this terminal, it'll still be a good fix. And, uh, but that's what I'm going to do now. So repair was successful. What I did is I took, uh, some of the legs, from the capacitors you know this is one of the, like the strip that they come installed i just snip them off but i got one of the old extra long legs that i snipped off and i bent one around 90 degrees i shoved it in the hole and then i stripped off some of the uh the insulation off the top of this run used some flux and i tinned it and soldered that leg right to this run and then shoved it down in the hole where it was corroded out from and soldered the capacitor back in trimmed it up cleaned it all up plenty of uh, electrical parts cleaner get all the flux off of there that i used and let's give it a test power's on one second and it goes out check engine light on your dash will come on and stay on because the engine isn't running so and at this point we should be good, so there you go. If you'll pump cycles a couple times, it should start flickering, it starts thinking about it. The computer is alive and active. I start giving us flash code. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Pause, then one. All right, there's our first code. Next one should be two, pause, then two. One, two, pause, one, two. Yep, then it should go down this list. So I'm not going to sit there and, and bore you with that. But yeah, this sucker's working now. Good fix. Now to finish this up properly. Since we scratched all that conformal rubberized coating off to get to the terminals, we got to put some back if we want it to uh, be resistant to the weather. So I have this little bottle. Wow, I didn't even know it's cracked. How did that happen? Hopefully it'll self seal. <laughs> All right. Well, nothing's leaked. Man, I don't know if it froze. Couldn't have. But oh well. Anyway, we're gonna dab some of this on the terminals and uh, put it back in its case. Test it one more time and then uh, mail it back to my buddy. So sweet. Oh, one more thing. Let's test the uh, the five volts. And here we go. We got five volts now. 4.99 volts. I call that a win. Better than 1.2. So, all right. And there's your voltage for all your your sensors. So, all right. There we go. All right. Back to you in a sec. All right. Back all back together. One final test before I uh, get ready to box it back up and send it back to my buddy in the states. So, power it up. So. Right, fuel pump works. Check engine light. Got five volts. 
chest. There we go. All right. So he'll be able to get his car going again. So uh, yeah, successful fix. Took a little longer than I thought because all the troubleshooting. But hey, things to do for a buddy. So hope to catch you again next video. See you soon.